Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Truth plus love equals life. Today I'm going to share the story of my beloved Allie Cat. It's spelled A L L I E C A T. Um, and she was just one of the highlights of my life. I absolutely loved her like a baby. Uh, growing up, I never thought I'd be into cats. I was in college, it was maybe 1994. A friend of mine was looking at these Bengal cats, which my brother would later get a couple of. And I went and looking at them, and they were like three or four hundred bucks. And I thought, wow, they're really beautiful cats. Uh, he had been into them. I thought, well, this is fun. I lived by myself in an apartment. I was like, well, let's get a cat. It would be, you know, it'd be nice. Uh, simple, right? I had a dog back home. Well, I was at my friend's house one day. I had this cute little cat, and, and, and his sister asked me, can you take this little cat outside past the security gate so she doesn't get locked in here? She wandered in here. I'm like, okay. I picked the little cat up. She was a wild cat. I thought, you know, she's going to bite me or anything? No, she was cool. I picked her up. Started walking. I was thinking about spending some money on a Bengal cat. And Jesus was like, this is not difficult. I looked at her. She was a little calico cat. This girl wanted to call her Callie. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about buying a cat, and here's one in my hand. For free. This one is awfully cute. I didn't know, being wild, if she was going to claw me or get me or whatever. And at the time, my dad had made good money. I had a, a nice car. It had leather seats. I've been, you know, I've had money. I've not had money. It's fine. Um, I got in the car and thought to myself, oh, no, where she just goes berserk. I had never seen a stray cat. You know, she'd claw everything or whatever. Put her in the car. She going to be cool? She looked at me. with little raccoon patches over her eyes and natural rac rock star sunglasses. She was like, goodbye, cruel world. This is my daddy. And I looked at her, and I thought, this is too easy. And I brought her back to my apartment, and I got her some food and stuff, and there was this little ledge, like six inches off the first floor balcony, and I would let her go outside and just look, you know, breathe, whatever, get some air. Well, one day, it didn't take long, she was gone. I was like, oh, no. She was so cute, I thought somebody must have wanted her. So I told my friends, if anybody puts a sign out, I'll give the cat back. But I'm not putting a sign out to make people know. They put a sign out, I'm fair and square, this is your cat, no problem. Well, she jumped off the ledge, and I was like, oh, no. I never should have done that. She was so cute and cool. I was like, oh, no. And I named her Alley Cat, just like what the girl's name, like Allison or something, though it sounds like Alley Cat, okay. E -E -Y. But it was I -E. And I thought, oh no, that was stupid. She must have gone, run away and found her own owners. I really liked her. She was cool. She had a little zebra stripe in the middle. She had a porcupine tongue. And she looked like a squirrel's tail. Those are the four animal parts of Alley Cat. She had natural raccoon rock star sunglasses. She had the cutest meow. I just thought she was the coolest thing. She was gone. I was like, oh no, I better start looking for him. I bet she took off. I woke, you know, I I don't know if, I don't remember if I woke up or if it was a couple hours I came by. I was like, she was gone. She just went from the ledge over the stairwells. Long story short, I turned around. There was a little pool in this apartment complex and they had uh, palm trees because it was Texas. It was in Austin. And I was like, oh no. I'll never see. And she popped her little head up. <laughs> right up outside of that little date palm tree or whatever, and she was like, Meow. and there she was, this little white calico cat with the black patches over her eyes and the little calico thing, and I was like, oh, man, I picked her up, and I never did that again. <laughs> and she was my cat for 17 or 18 years. I absolutely loved her. Her name was Alley Cat Guinevere Stevenson Lund. I gave her four names just because I thought it was cute. And the whole time, now, I just felt like such a throwaway. I felt like they threw her away, too, and I thought it was a privilege. She just looked like a, like a royal cat, like heavenly royal, okay? Not bloodline of cane, like royal cat, like, how could they throw you away? You're awesome. Well, I felt thrown away, too. I had Lyme disease. I didn't know it. She was about to graduate from college at the age of 20, being treated like garbage because I didn't take the steroids at University of Texas. I only got decent grades. I graduated from 20 years old, felt like a total failure, like the kid from... Breakfast club, and he pulls a little elephant thing, and he's like going to kill himself with a, a flare gun or whatever. And I was, I was thinking about killing myself, not because I wanted to, because I just was so burdened. I had no idea that you got a biological weapon eating your brain and your liver and your, you know, for, for years. So 
So this cat saved my life. I just absolutely adored her like a baby. If you could have taken a six-year-old Roger Lund, and we weren't raised with cats and dogs. My mom had gone from New Jersey where they're kind of a nuisance. Although she loved, she loved the alley cat later, you know, and she loved the dog we had later. But if you could have taken a six-year-old Roger Lund and, and a grown adult went there and found him, the little kid would be like, I know you're gorgeous. I'm no joking. So if you could have taken a little six-year-old Roger Lund and had like 10,000 different yearbooks full of kitty cats and said, you're going to have a kitty cat someday. I'm like, why a kitty cat? And just trust me, go with this. I could have run through at six-year-old a 10,000 pictures of cats. That one, that's the one that I want. But there's 10. That's the cat for me. It was just like, it was in my DNA. She was my, she was an accessory to my soul, and she was the fifth chamber of my heart. I consider it a privilege every day that I, that I got to have her. And she died about five or six years ago when we were doing some kind of recording work, and we wanted to finish the record, and we'll finish it now. It was the day after I started singing a very special song called Provision about standing up to the devil. And she had kidney failure, and she had to be put down. It sucked, because I really thought she was going to get resurrected and transfigured and super kitty. But she's with Jesus now. She's one of the highlights of my life. And the best things are free, and the best things are love, and the best things, some of them meow, and some of them wolf, a wolf, you know, pets are angels in fur coats. They're not emotionally, they're not intellectually impressive. They are emotional geniuses. She was absolutely just one of the highlights of my life. I loved her being, I mean, I don't make her an idol. She was my friend. She sits on Jesus' throne. She was literally prime critter of all time. I'm not joking. We took down the devil together when I knew I was the man-child. Nobody was with me at the time. All along the world, there I am in the Bible, Revelation 12, 5. The 20-year-old kid realizing you're the other side of Adam, the created being. You're going to rule the world for a thousand years. No pressure there, kid. And Alley Cat was just absolutely amazing. She had the best meow. When we finished my record, just before she had died, we, we recorded her meowing, and we're going to put it on the I Love You song. You can hear her meowing, you, you, like in tune. You can manipulate it so it sounds like meow, meow, meow. And she was just the best. And it's funny because as, uh, you know, in a governmental form, referee, the government's a referee, not a coach. Well, referees are called zebras. She had one little zebra stripe down the middle of her chest, and every now and then, when you got really blessed, if I had my shirt off and she would sit on my chest, you would have a, a naked heart to heart, meaning like heart to heart heart. And every now and then, rare, I'm talking like five times in my whole life, like Elijah the prophet stretching out his hands to the kid in the form of a cross, giving him the breath of life, resurrecting him, to give me a wide grip. It was a blessing every time. I'm talking maybe five, ten times top in my life. A wide grip, heart to heart, with her dad, loving on the kitty cat. She was amazing. I won't let the devil turn him into something sad. You know, this is how he got to be. You turn him into a positive. I'm going to see her in the kingdom of heaven. She talks trash on the devil every day. My dad is coming to kick you in the keister in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Truth plus love equals life. Hey, devil, 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 devil. Now is the time, Miss Kitty. Your daddy loves you. I can't wait to see you. You were the best. Thanks.